everybody man i hope everybody's having a productive day feeling blessed and like i always say it's one life one chance we only got one chance to do this right let's get it done once again shout out to my subscriber man shout me this hat says salinas california with the with the ooh, with the with the fields in it the salad bowl fields so for those from northern california and those from salinas want to check out his merch his ig's right there and if anybody got some merch they want to promote i'm willing to let you guys shoot it to me and i'll wear it and rock it and do whatever i can do to help you guys' business out for free Nothing major. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up and you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel. Check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. This story right here is about dirty politics. Usually what I cover and usually what subscribers provide for me to tell. Experiences that they went through, things that they witnessed part of the program that they had to uh, realize that, you know, things can not, don't turn out the way people want them to turn out. So we had an individual who was running a Calipat A yard. His name was Termite. He's from Eastside Longo. And uh, as he was running the, the yard on behalf of uh, Terco from Bassett, obviously he's working hand in hand with the big homie, fulfilling all the big homies agendas. He's taking, he's collecting, he's having his fools bring in dope. He's breaking fools off that are part of Terco's uh, little crew members. But, you know, he's the main one. He's the most important one that's running the yard on behalf of the big homie that was in the back at the time. But there was a part of the ad seg that was A5. It was ad seg overflow that he felt belonged to a yard. You know, term I wanted it all for himself. And sometimes people fall into that position where they, if they're working for a big homie and they got the big homie's blessings to do whatever the hell they want. And when the big homie says, hey, bro, that's all you right there. Take care of it. I just need my money and I need my dope monthly. No questions asked, no falter. Some people take that a little too far and take it to heart and don't know what to do with it. Sometimes they exercise it way too much and way too abusively where, you know, it's going to cause a rebellion. It's going to cause people to push back. So he needed to get a message to A5. And take it over. So two homeboys owed some cleanup. One was Topo. And the other one was um, Bam Bam from Blythe. He sent them to the back to make it to A5 Overflow. Because that's where you're initially going to go. And then you'll probably get from that from the ad seg overflow. The Sureños that had the ad seg, the ASU on lock. The CEOs walk around and be like, hey bro, is there any of your homies over here that you want to bring over here? And usually they know who to bring over. So they'll pick and choose who they're going to bring over. Well, these two homeboys show up in A5 Overflow. So they report to the casa, the mesa back there. And they said, hey, bro, uh, hey, go a devil. I'm such and such, such and such. We're, we've been sent by a termite on behalf of Terco. You know, you need to relinquish your position. Let us know who you are. We're taking over. This belongs to termite. And the way the Southside program works, usually when Sudanians get back there, they don't ever know who's in the position of power. Because the ASU could be ran by a different big homie. You know what I mean? A big homie could... A big homie could be running a yard out here, but the ASU can be belong to another carna, and that carna can have workers on this yard sending dope to the back so these dudes can sell it, make money, and whatever money gets made from the ASU goes to that big homie, not the big homie that's running the yard. He already has the yard. That's how a lot of the power and territory and money gets divided equally so everybody gets an equal share, a fair share. Whatever money, whatever you're assigned to and whatever is given to you, whatever territory, however you make your money, how much you make your money, that's on you. But they don't want to tell these individuals, you know, who was running the back. And so he start, they started getting disrespectful, like, hey, you pussy, you cowards. Hey, show yourselves, man. Woo -de -woo -de -woo -de -woo. We're taking this over. Like, you know, confront us about it. And the Southsiders in the back, who obviously were answering to Rascal, and Rascal was answering to Fox, didn't feel like they had the need to actually let these individuals know or relinquish the information. Like, yeah, we're the ones running the yard and then just turn it over to these guys. They weren't given instructions to turn it over to this guy and then turn it over to Tedico and his manpower. So they kept it and they harbored the position of authority that they had back right there in ASU, plus taking the control over AS, AS, plus taking the control over A5 overflow. So the way the Sureños looked at it from the back from ASU was like, hey, bro, these fools came over here causing some ruckus, disrespecting the casa. That's, there's no tolerance for that. And usually the ASU has more authority than the yard. So sometimes they can actually dictate what the yard's doing or if the yard makes calls and they, they, the ASU investigates the bag, they can easily say like, you know, they can either stamp it or just shoot letters out there and kites like, hey, bro, you guys are going about it the wrong way. 
And in this situation, they were going about it the wrong way. So at the time they had, this was when they had, they still had group yard, a little group rec yard at the ASU. First there's the dog kennels and then they had a, a group yard. And then they stopped the group yard because more violence was taking place. Foods were getting jumped a lot more easier on the group yards. So Bam Bam actually goes out there and they smash him. They smash him bad, put him in his place for disrespecting the casa, for coming over here with some dumb direct orders from Termite and Terco, not realizing that this is not his jurisdiction no more. This is Rascals and Fox's jurisdiction. So they beat him up, put him in his place, walk along. Topo hears about it because they separated the individuals and now he knows what they got coming. And it was actually, they went on a medical trip together. And when they try to get him in the van, they try to slice him up like in his arms and his face and they couldn't get to him. So the CL throws Topo in there first and then throws all those Sudanios from Adseg and Adseg Overflow in there. And they're pretty much in the back of the van kicking each other in, sh in shackles and waist chains. Hey, removal is removal. As long as they can say they put hands on him and they try to cut him, they don't care if they try to just slice his arm. It didn't even matter. As long as they slid blood and let him know that he has something coming, that's the best that they can do because they couldn't reach him. So now Topo knows he has something coming. For all this, for, for, for going back there and disrespecting the Sureños back there, disrespecting Rasco and Fox's turf, his Adia. But what do you expect? They were instructed by Termite, and Termite was instructed by Terco. So they're only following orders. If they, if they went about it the wrong way, then so be it. But policy and procedures states that I don't have to relinquish the position that I have assigned by my carna, my padrino, my big homie, my tío, to you guys because you guys work for somebody else. So they got into an internal feud over AdSeg overflow and over AdSeg relinquishing positions. Terco wanted to take over the whole facility, but the whole facility didn't belong to him on his, uh, you know, going to court. And Thorpe was trying to plead his case. And he's like, hey, bro, like, look, this is what's going on. This is what I was assigned to do. You know, termite, this, this, and that. He broke down his whole scenario trying to save face and trying to stay in good standings, man, on good regard and not be taken off roll call and put on disregard. Obviously, he's fighting for his career. And Rascal's pretty much the appointed authority. And Rascal's pretty much the appointed authority by Fox. Fox gave Rascal the opportunity to say, hey, bro, you make your own decisions at your own discretion. You know, that's that's how he was molding Rascal because Rascal, the books were going to be open to make Rascal and Rascal wound up getting made later, but it was only temporary. So what does Rascal do? He sends word out to the yard and tells Termite, hey, you need to come to the back. You got some things to answer to. Termite gets the, gets the request and he does a two-on-one -on, on the yard. A quick little beat down, a little checking, a checada and makes it to the back. And when he makes it to the back, he ends up in the ASU and he ends up uh, in the overflow and they actually move him to the ASU where they needed him at. See, the thing was, when they moved him into the cell, they moved him into a particular cell that they wanted him to be placed in. Like I said, ASU overflow, the cops would come to the regular ASU and be like, all right, look, these are the Sudanios that just came. Who do you want us to bring? And obviously the Sudanios are like, this dude. So what do they do? Pull out the shanks. Rascal said this fool needs to get blasted for that, for what he did. He went about it all the wrong way and he disrespected Fox's territory and he disrespected mine. So they had two bangers, man. One of them was made out of a, a tray. They mounted a tray and it looked like a big old ice pick. Like a, They said it was about the size of a black Sharpie. That's how big it was, a fat little ice pick. And they sent it to the Vato. Then they made another banger out of trash bags. They melted hella trash bags together and it was like a Pepsi glass shank. And they sent it to the Vato that he was gonna end up being a cell with. And they were like, and pick and choose, you know, pick your, pick your poison, bro, which one do you want? And he picked one. Of course, he picked the biggest one. Now, the individual that was gonna sell up with Termite, he owed cleanup. So this is his way to clean it up. So they moved Termite in there, and now everybody on the south side, on the, on, the, on the ASU south side area pretty much knew when Termite gets in that cell, it's over with. He's gonna get a checada. So they moved Termite after count, and it was after dinner when everything just went absolutely quiet. Now, remember, when you're in ASU, everybody's talking loud, everybody's fishing, everybody's on the tier, people are playing chess, people are playing dominoes on the tier, people are on the vents playing battleship. You know, it's chaotic back there. It's a real mess, man. But that's why I said nine o'clock, man, it's peaceful. You can go to sleep finally or watch some TV or something. But it's pretty much chaotic. But everybody now is quiet because termites are getting put in the cell. And Termite's 5'11", but the dude they put him in there with was like, uh, he looked like a bolo on Bloodsport. Hella big. 
Hella humongous. With a seven inch banger, bro. So you know he's gonna do vital damage. And it's quiet, and the next thing you know, you hear the scuffling. And when you hear and when you're in ad seg, everything echoes. So they're hearing scuffling and they're hearing termite get slammed on the door. And then all of a sudden you hear like Ugh, uh, uh. And then they actually heard termite screaming, hey fool, you, you're killing me, dog. You're killing me, dog. Stop, dog. Oh, 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 oh. And you just hear every time that fool would like puncture termite, termite's body would hit the door. So just like you, you knew when he was getting stabbed. And you knew when he was getting plugged. And he started screaming real loud, and people, all the South Siders started flushing their toilets to try to make noise so the COs in the tower didn't hear it. Then termite started screaming, CO, help. Help! He's killing me! He's killing me! And it caught the CO's attention from the tower. Not the ones on the floor, but the tower. And when he came, he seen. And turned my says, hey, bro, I got to get up out of the cell, bro. I can't, I, I, I can't be in the cell no more. Just leaking. Leaking. They snatch him up. Old boy does his cleanup, does his job. Turn my goes to medical, and then he comes back. And he comes back to a different... He comes back to an ad seg, but to a different role. And he ends up in the dog kennels. He's on walk alone, but he's still showing face. He's still trying to plead his case, but they said from now on, he ain't taking his shirt off. He keeps his shirt on when he works out because they said he's just filled with holes, holes everywhere through his whole body. And a lot of people, a lot, a lot of the Sureños at the time, the homie told me, he's like, bro, we were making fun of him, bro. But Bolo, the homie that removed him, had the pictures since it was a DA referral, had the pictures already. And he was passing them around the Sureños, making fun of him. Like, oh, this fool's a culero. This fool's a pussy. This and this and that. He was screaming for the hoodahs, this and this and that. That's what he gets, though. That's exactly what he gets. And sure enough, bro, everybody was seeing the pictures and seeing the holes that got put in termite. We're just laughing at that fool. But he stood solid. He didn't want to be put on disregard. He wanted to clear up his name. And it's funny that after this took place, IGI sneaks into the building the next day, dresses up like kitchen workers, with hair nets and everything, passing out trays, and rushed all the cells. Yelled at everybody to get down, was spraying everybody. They sprayed hella Sudanians. Sudanians were flushing kites, dough, bangers down the toilet. You know, that was their way. That was their punishment. And then getting sprayed in the process and being left in your cell for hours, that's that sucks, bro. That hurts. But that's how IGI pretty much works, especially when you front a CO off, because the CO is the one that said, this is the guy you want moved. We got you guys. So do you want to know how it ended? While Fox and Rascal kept the ASU and A5 overflow to themselves, A yard belonged to Terco. Termite reaches out to Terco, the one who told him to do all this, and Terco gives him a pass. But he also says, hey, from now on, you're just going to do your thing and start minding your own business now. And that's it. At that, Terco sent this dude on a mission to go take over A5. And based on the fact that he couldn't take over A5, and Terco didn't want to get on a feud with Fox. He pretty much just gave the little homie a pass because he knew the homeboy couldn't get it done and told him, hey, from now on, you're not holding no more positions. The yard belongs to somebody else. And from here, here on out, start minding your own business. And just left Termite right there just to be a, just a regular Solado, regular Sureño, who's probably going to be old cleanup for this situation after he done did a two-on-one to get to the back. And now he's just going to be sent on missions from here on out, bro. He ain't never going to be able to rise through the ranks or hold a mess up position again because he's still going to work for Terco, but Terco ain't going to give him another position like that again. Now, to me, that is a messed up situation. And I think about it like, man, Terco probably was like, he didn't want to admit it to Fox. Like, yeah, I was trying to take over your turf. So when Fox probably brought it up and they had a little talk in the back, he's like, no, let me take care of this Vato, but let me give him a pass, bro. Maybe he didn't know what he was doing. Try to brush it under the real under the rug, like you know, try to paint it like it wasn't as serious as as it seems. You know, and damn why he was behind all this trying to take over A5 overflow for and taking over ad seg in general. So he wanted money sources from two different places, the yard and the ad seg. That's how greedy some people can get. And at the end, when his solado couldn't get it done, he just discarded his solado, like, hey bro, from here on out, mind your own business. So to me, that's just a messed up situation that term I got put into. And now He's still in good standings. He still remained a solid individual. So, you, you know, my hat's off to him that he took, he went through all this and he took the hits for it. And he's probably doing hits for it afterwards. And he probably still standing firm in his belief system. Like, yeah, I'm gonna still work for this carnal, even though he did me dirty. I know I wouldn't. So I thought I'd share that story with you guys, man. With that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done.
Peace.